So I was um, thinking about a couple of things. Actually, I always think about this when I listen to the first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, there are some things in the first book that never, ever, ever come up again later in the series. The first one is when Hagrid comes in and Harry is like, who are you? He's like, I'm Keeper of the Keys at Hogwarts. Well, he's never again called the Keeper of the Keys, and that's even what the chapter was called. He's known as the Gamekeeper. And, of course, he says he's the gamekeeper of the grounds at Hogwarts, but, you know, at first, you know, he calls himself the Keeper of the Keys. That's never used again. Um, another thing is the Hogwarts school song. It goes, Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Hoggy Warty Hogwarts, teach us something, please. Whether we be old and bald or young with scabby knees, our heads could do with feeling of some interesting stuff. For now they're bare and full of air, dead flies and bits of fluff. So teach us things worth knowing. Bring back what we forgot. Just do your best, we'll do the rest and learn until our brains all rot. That is never brought back. Ever. Like, even when, you know, Harry was present at, um, the sorting in book four and five, they never sang the Hogwarts school song. Did they sing the song after the feast? Yes, yeah, so in none of the books, even, you know, when he was able to attend the feast, um, after the sorting had already gone through, he they never sang the Hogwarts uh, school song again. This has nothing to do with like the actual books, but it still just bothers me that Peeves is not in any of the movies. Ah, it's just ah, ah, so anger, <laughs> so anger. Oh, the pointed black hat for everyday wear. Well. I think you see them wearing those in the movies and such um, at some point, maybe the first and second movies, I don't remember. Um, but they're never mentioned after that, after the list of things that you need for uh, for school. You know, you got the, the robes, of course, the black robes, but they never wear their hats. You know, the cliche witch's hat, the pointed black hat, they never wear them. They're never mentioned again. Why do they need a hat? Hagrid mentions to Harry that Lily and James Potter, his parents, were very, very good, you know, were very, very good at magic and everything, and he said, head boy and girl at Hogwarts. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you have to be a prefect first before you become head boy or girl? Now, I don't know much about um, if Lily was really head girl at some point, or even a prefect, but it clearly says in Book 5 that James was not a prefect. Lupin was. So, how could James be head boy? James had never become head boy. Sort of another thing I wondered is... They... <sighs> Sweet kids outside, sorry. There's, um... In the first book, when they go up to their dormitory, um... You know, first year dormitory, but then the second year they go up, you know, Harry says, goes up to his familiar uh, dormitory that now says second years on it. And I'm like, well, wait, do they just have the same dormitory? They just change the signs around or, or what? I don't understand. So that's something they didn't exactly explain. Uh, it's hard for me to remember anything else. Another thing in the first book that I don't understand is why did Molly say... Uh, what's the platform number again? Because she went to Hogwarts, and the platform has always been nine and three quarters. I guess J.K. Rowling put that in so that Harry could um could hear um that someone else was trying to get onto platform nine and three quarters. But honestly, the word Muggle should have you know hinted. He he turned around and he was like Muggles. <laughs> but still, they I mean. She's been, you know, taking, let's see, her oldest son, Percy, uh, in the first book, had been going for, let's see, a fifth, yeah, he was a fifth year, because he, it was his first year being prefect. Um, so, you know, obviously, she was already taking her children for at least five years, and, you know, she went to Hogwarts herself, so why did she have to ask which platform number it was? 
I honestly cannot think of a single more damn thing right now. I, I feel like there's more. I feel like there's probably something that has to do with Voldemort or Quirrell or something, but that's all I can think of. Um, so, yeah, just things that sort of bother me. <laughs> but otherwise, she's been very consistent with things like that. God, I feel like there was something pretty big and obvious, but I can't think of it. It'll come to me at some point, and I'll be like, oh yeah! Anyway, so yeah, that was that. <laughs> Fun, bye. Oh, you may not think I'm pretty, but don't judge on what you see. I'll eat myself if you can find a smarter hat than me. You can keep your bowlers black, your top hat sleek and tall. For I'm the Hogwarts sorting hat and I can cap them all. There's nothing hidden in your head the sorting hat can't see. So try me on and I will tell you where you are to be. You might belong in Gryffindor where dwell brave at heart. Their daring nerve and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. You might belong in Hufflepuff, where they are just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Or yet, wise old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. Or perhaps in Slytherin you'll make your real friends. Those cunning folk use any means to achieve their ends. So put me on, don't be afraid, and you won't get in a flap. You're safe in my hands, though I have none. For I'm a thinking cap. A thousand years or more ago, when I was newly sown, there lived four wizards of renown whose names are still well known. Bull Gryffindor from Wildmoor, Fair Ravenclaw from Glen. Sweet Hufflepuff from Valley Broad, shrewd Slytherin from Fen. They share a wish, a hope, a dream, they hatched a daring plan. To educate young sorcerers, thus Hogwarts school began. Now each of these four founders form their own house for each. Did value different virtues in the ones they had to teach. By Gryffindor, the bravest were priced far beyond the rest. For Ravenclaw, the cleverest would always be the best. For Hufflepuff, hard workers were most worthy of admission. And power-hungry Slytherin loved those of great ambition. While still alive, they did divide their favorites from the throng. Yet how to pick the worthy ones when they were dead and gone? Twas Gryffindor who found the way, he whipped me off his head. The founders put some brains in me so I could choose instead. Now slip me snug around your ears, I've never yet been wrong. I'll have a look inside your mind and tell where you belong. In times of old when I was new, when Hogwarts barely started, the founders of our noble school thought never to be parted. Knighted by a common goal, they had the self-same yearning to make the world's best magic school and pass along their learning. Together we will build and teach the four good friends decided. And never did they dream that they might someday be divided. For were there such friends anywhere as Slytherin and Gryffindor, unless it was the second pair of Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw? So how could it have gone so wrong? How could such friendships fail? Why, I was there, and so can tell this whole sad, sorry tale. Said Slytherin, we'll teach us those whose ancestry is purest. Said Ravenclaw, we'll teach those whose intelligence is surest. Said Gryffindor, we'll teach all those with brave deeds to their name. Said Hufflepuff, I'll teach the lot and treat them just the same. These differences caused little strife when first they came to light. For each of the four founders had a house in which they might take only those they wanted. So, for instance, Slytherin took only pure blood wizards of great cunning just like him, and only those of sharpest mind were taught by Ravenclaw. 
While the bravest and the boldest went to daring Gryffindor. Good Hufflepuff, she took the rest and taught them all she knew. Thus the houses and their founders retained friendships firm and true. So Hogwarts worked in harmony for several happy years. But the discord crept among us, feeding on our faults and fears. The houses that, like pillars four, had once held up our school, now turned upon each other and divided, sought to rule. And for a while it seemed the school must meet in early end, what with dueling and with fighting, and the clash of friend on friend. And at last there came a morning when old Slytherin departed, and though the fighting then died out, he left us quite downhearted. And never since the founders four were whittled down to three, have the houses been united as they once were meant to be. And now the sorting hat is here and you all know the score. I sort you into houses because that is what I'm for. But this year I'll go further, listen closely to my song. Though condemned I am to split you, still I worry that it's wrong. Though I must fulfill my duty and must quarter every year, Still I wonder whether sorting may not bring the end I fear. Oh no, the perils read the signs, the warning history shows, For our Hogwarts is in danger from external deadly foes, And we must unite inside her, or we'll crumble from within. I have told you, I have warned you, let the sorting now begin. What? For the record, I'm in Hufflepuff. <laughs>